What exactly is an S12J and the tools that you use to fulfill the strategy? A Section 12J company is a company which is governed by the South African Income Tax Act, which provides the investor with a tax incentive where they can get 100% tax deduction in the year they invest for providing their investment capital to the South African economy over a five year period. So maybe just to start, it's useful to give you a little bit of background to Section 12J and how it came about. And once we've spoken around that, we can talk you through the high level principles of how Section 12J works. But really at its core, what Section 12J is, is it's a piece of legislation in the South African Income Tax Act that, although it's a new-ish concept in South Africa, isn't actually new internationally. It was based on a set of legislation out of the United Kingdom, which is called the Venture Capital Trust Regime or the VCT rules. And really what 12J is, I almost think of it as a quasi-public-private partnership where effectively what governments has done is they've co-opted the private sector and said to us as the asset manager, in exchange for making investments into selected areas of the South African economy, and that selected area is both in, in terms of the type of business you're allowed to invest into, as well as the size of the business. And we'll talk about it, but there's a 50 million rand limit in the size of any single entity that we're allowed to invest into. But in exchange for us, taking our shareholder and investor money and investing into these areas of the economy, our investor gets an attractive tax deduction or tax break for doing so. So it's a similar thing in a way to the traditional tax collection mechanism, which is you earn money, you pay it to SARS, and then National Treasury is one of its objectives, is responsible for deploying that tax revenue into selected areas of the economy. This is a mechanism which effectively cuts out the middleman, if you want, and co-ops the private sector to assist National Treasury in meeting its objectives. I think just to add to a bit of the history of 12J, it actually was introduced in 2009 into the Income Tax Act. But from 2009 to 2015, it, there wasn't a great uptake from investors. And the main reason for that was the tax benefit that Dino spoke of, you get on day one, was fully recouped whenever you sold your shares in the 12J entity. So even if you hold your shares for 10 years, there would be a full recoupment of that benefit. And in 2015, they changed the Income Tax Act to say that the benefit would be, become permanent, i.e. there wouldn't be a recoupment if you hold your shares for five years. And from then is really where we've seen kind of the growth in the industry, and that's when Westbrook actually started um, the 12J product after the change in, in that legislation. So we started our first Section 12J strategy as Westbrook in 2016, early 2016. And to date, Westbrook has grown to being South Africa's largest Section 12J manager, and we're very proud to manage approximately 50% of the total AUM of the 12J industry. And we'll talk you why and how that came about. But I think it also speaks very interestingly just to the way that Section 12J as an asset class has grown in South Africa. Where in early 2016, I think there were only about 10 venture capital companies that were registered at the time, there's now well in excess of 100. And that just shows you that since the changes which John T mentioned, there's been a significant uptake in Section 12J as an asset class. And what we've also started to see through the last sort of recent years is a, an increasing uptake from the institutional investment market as opposed to simply high net worths. And it's very interesting to see, you know, you often find that the big wealth managers are a little bit slower to getting involved in a new asset class, being sort of low risk by nature and, and having a, an appetite to just wait a while to see how certain products perform and to get a track record so that they can do a proper due diligence. We're now entering that sphere of the evolution of Section 12J uh, where we've seen some of the big players start to enter the market and allocate their clients into our products. And I think just to touch on which we haven't, simplistically what 12J means to the <coughs> investor is for every rand they invest in a 12J, in that tax year they'll get that as a deduction in their taxable income. So it basically works in the taxable income side of the income tax calculation that you do and you deduct it from any taxable income you earn in that year. Taxable income is any form of interest received, capital gains tax or any other form of income that sits in the taxable income calculation. Um, if the investor holds the shares for five years, there won't be a recoupment on the day one tax benefit that they got. And I think another key thing is, and we'll take, we'll take you through it, but there is an exit tax consequence for 12J investments, which every investor should understand before investing in 12J. And that is basically that a share in a 12J company carries a base cost of zero. 
And that is essentially because the share had, you used the share cost in the day one to get a tax benefit. So therefore you can't capitalize it essentially to base cost. So on exit from a 12J, the investor will be liable for CGT from a base cost of zero. So maybe just to talk you through the numbers, there's a very simple graph which can be drawn just to isolate what section 12J gives you as a benefit. And this is always the way we like to unpack our investment offerings is to say, what does section 12J give you as an investor? And then the qu second question is, what do our underlying investment products give you? And when you put the two together, you get to a combined return. So on a very simplistic level, we'll assume for the purposes of this discussion, an individual who pays tax at the maximum marginal rate, which is currently 45%. If that individual was to invest 100 Rand in a Section 12J company before 28 February in whatever tax year they're involved, they would get a 100 Rand deduction against taxable income, exactly the same had they paid staff salary of 100 Rand. What that means is that they would have ordinarily paid 45 Rand in tax, being 100 times by 45%. Now they're effectively not paying that, what, that 45 Rand in tax. And so their net investment, if you will, in the section 12J is 55, being the 100 they put in, less the 45, which is either physically refunded to their investor in cash by SARS in the event where there's PAYE or some form of tax that has already been paid. What happens then, the investor claims it back. Or if it's a provisional tax like capital gains, you simply deduct that on your tax return. So the net investment in the 12J in year one would be minus 55. And then Jonty spoke about it. If at the end of the mandated five year investment period, we just give you that 100 Rand back. So assuming for a second that we didn't do anything with the investment and just sat in cash, you would have a capital gains tax consequence on that 100 Rand going back because you already got the benefit of the 12J deduction up front, you can't also capitalize it to base cost. As an individual, you would pay tax at 45%, but the inclusion rate for capital gains is only 40%. In other words, you would pay 18% capital gains tax on the 100 Rand we give back to you, being 40% of 45, which means you get 100 back, less 18 Rand in tax, means that you get 82 on the way out after all taxes. So effectively, the simple profile of a 12J is 55 Rand invested in at the beginning, 82 Rand back after all taxes, gets you to an 8.3% annualized return. And that's a really important concept to understand for Section 12J, is that effectively, provided you've invested with a good asset manager who doesn't lose you money and who's able to protect your investment, what Section 12J will give you is an 8.3% annualized return, it's then up to the asset manager at the underlying level to then invest your money in such a way that you make an attractive return on top of that.